What made him fall asleep? He took some medicine. Yes, he took some medicine. And this is what I was wondering about if you had read this in high school. Do you know what the medicine would have been? Opium, yes. He was supposed to have been, uh, he had, and actually historically Coleridge did have a problem with opium. At this time it was not the, so, this, quite the same thing as, oh my, he's out there taking opium. It had been prescribed by a doctor and he developed an addiction to opium, and that is true. Um, he actually for some time had a doctor traveling with him to try to get him off of the opium, uh, but it's, it was a difficult thing uh, to overcome. Uh, make sure that I know um, so, it, historically, the opium presence is true, okay, that, I mean that, but once again I ask you, where's the title and where's the first line, and just kind of think about that, okay? Also, you might think about the whole idea of the, the fragment is published as a psychological curiosity rather than on the ground of any supposed poetic merits. What does that mean? He's saying, I'm publishing this for what purpose? To make you think. To make you think about what? The mind. Pardon? The mind. The mind and psychology and the, whether or not, the question of whether or not taking drugs maybe has an effect on something, I don't know. It's a psychological curiosity, <clears throat> so it's like a psychological study. Now, Coleridge and Wordsworth invented what? Do you remember from before the break? Romantic. romantic poetry, yes, romantic poetry. Do you remember the, did I give you the definition, Wordsworth de, Wordsworth's definition of poetry? Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Okay, it is the... Spontaneous overflow, yes, of a powerful feeling. Yes. Powerful feelings. Feelings. Recollected. Recollected. Good. Recollected. Thank you. How'd you do that? It's a musical. Yeah. 
And they used that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They used the Greek in Xanadu. Yeah. Well, it's about a Greek goddess. Okay. Okay. And he says, I'll sing a sweeter song later, right? Is that what this is? Yeah. I'm not sure that that's the Greek word for Xanadu. Okay. Does it look like, did they use the Greek? It in, just looks like it, but I could be wrong. It just reminds me of that word. Bonus points. Y'all can bring the Greek word for Xanadu. I can Google it right now. Okay, Google it for me. Okay, thank you. Yeah, now. Is that how you say it, though, Xanadu? Well, in here, now. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, that's just, it just looks really weird. I mean, in, in Greek, if that's the Greek for Xanadu, it's because that's Samadron, I think. It's been a while. So, uh, uh, Dion, that's what I don't know. I don't know. Like we'll find out. It does look like it. You're right. Yeah. And it's not a musical Xanadu. Okay. All right. But tomorrow is yet to come. Okay, and now you get what most people call. Shh. I'm, I'm being particular about quietness because I did talk to some of the online folks over the break while I was doing the exams, and it is hard for them to hear when they're talking. So we want to kind of make it easier for them to hear. Okay, so let's start with the first couple of lines. Let's start with what most people think are the most the first couple of lines of this poem. Okay, and then read on to the end. It's not very long. In Xanadu did Kubla Khan a stately pleasure dome decree, where out the sacred river ran through caverns measureless to man down to a sunless sea. So twice five miles of fertile ground with walls and towers were girdled round, and there were gardens bright with sinuous rills where blossomed many an incense-bearing tree. And here were forests ancient as the hills enfolding sunny spots of greenery. Okay. How does that sound? Is it happy, sad, scary? I mean, back to Dr. Phil. How do you feel about that? It's so sublime. Oh! <laughs> she says, it's sublime. Look at these dancers. You're getting, yes, it's sublime. It's mystical, right? The pleasure dome. Uh, we're out, but it's not just pleasant, because remember, what is the, wor the world of the sublime? What is, what is the sublime like? It can be unpleasant, yes. Actually very kind of, it's connected to the world of death to a great extent, like um, slaughterhouses or char charnel houses, which are places where they keep the bones of the dead, stuff like that. These, these, that's the area of the sublime. And so it's the pleasure dome, it's exotic because it's Xanadu, and there's a sacred river, there's that transcendence. But out the sacred river ran through caverns measureless to man, down to a sunless sea. How do you have a sea that has no sun in it, on it? It's in a cave. It's an underground sea. I mean, that just gives me the creeps, but I don't like being enclosed and water gives me the creeps and stuff sometimes. So it's like, ooh, you know, that's kind of creepy, right? Um, down to and it's a, and they are they are caverns measureless to man. We can't measure science can't measure these caves, right? They go beyond what we've got measurement for, so we can't measure them. Something transcendent. But oh, that deep romantic chasm which slanted down the green hill athwart a cedar cover, a savage place as holy and enchanted as air beneath a waning moon was haunted by a woman wailing for her demon lover. Ooh. 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 Twilight, I guess, I don't know. Bad, <laughs> bad writing, but anyhow. <laughs> Twilight people, please. Okay, um, at least read something good, okay. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> so, savage. I mean, is there like a vampire guy in Twilight? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Who? He's all gray. What? He's all 